Hi everyone. Welcome to a Kerbal Space Program tutorial. This particular tutorial is uh, by request actually and it's on reaching the moon. So we're at a point in the career now where we're starting to make uh, repeated moon trips and I figure it's about time to do a tutorial on that because I haven't seen any tu video tutorials online that I'm perfectly pleased with. There are certain points that they seem to, to, to not cover or overcomplicate. And I just want to make this uh, pretty much dirt simple for you guys. So the first step in reaching the moon is reaching an orbit that is uh, as equatorial as you can make it. So if we take a look at this orbit here, we can see that um, it's really darn close. So close that we can't tell the difference to what the orbit of the moon is. That means it's perfectly equatorial. If we had to do, uh, if it wasn't quite equatorial, it was a little bit of off one way or the other, uh, then we'd have to do a plane change and that complicates things. So generally speaking, you want to reach an equatorial orbit and you do that by launching from the Kerbal Space Center and just pointing straight at 90 degrees um, the whole way and make sure you keep that angle really, really well. Um, obviously, you need a rocket ship that is capable of reaching and returning from the moon. If flown correctly, the Kerbal X, which is a stock ship available in the, um, in the sandbox mode, is certainly capable of reaching, landing on, and returning from the moon all in one, um, in one single mission without any cheats. So crucially, uh, in this particular thing, I have a little bit of fuel left uh, after my ascent and circularization. My orbit is a, looks like a 73 by 74 kilometer orbit here, which is pretty good. And we're gonna be getting ourselves set up to transfer to the moon next. In order to transfer to the moon, we need to roll our camera up and zoom out so we can see the moon. There it is. Go ahead and click on it and set as target. Now we can see that our descending nose, our, our plane difference is 0 0.1 degrees. So that's close enough. We're not going to worry about doing a plane change, which is a more complicated thing than we would need to worry about. Now, a lot of people have tutorials that show you you know, sort of maybe a little bit where on this orbit plane you want to place your initial maneuver. Um, like if you look at the moon on the horizon, you can place your maneuver here and get a pretty good approximation. I'm going to skip all that and show you the easiest way. Pick a random spot. Add a maneuver. Pull on the prograde marker. Give it a good tug. back off a little bit as you approach the orbit and as this apoapsis marker right here approaches the orbit height this 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 green orbit you want to have it just barely touch the orbit and stop now notice there are two new icons that have appeared we have these little bugs which give us an indication um, about where our ship is in relation to the moon so what's, what it's saying is that the closest point we're going to reach is right here. And the problem is, this is where our ship is going to end up when the moon ends up right here. That's a complete miss. We'd never actually reach the moon that way. So the secret to fixing this is quite simply, tilt your orbit down like this so you can see everything. Now that we have the orbit height set the way we want it to, just grab the disc and swing it around until you get a nice solid moon encounter like so. This moon encounter is so good in fact it doesn't have a periapsis which means we're going to crash right into the moon if we do nothing else. Now we can save ourselves a little bit of fuel by backing off the delta V until we get another a periapsis popping out. And, and then there's another thing you do on the prograde marker just gentle clicks on the mouse wheel, if your mouse is hovering over the prograde marker, will um, sort of change this number. So I'm clicking on the PE flag over here by the moon in a vain attempt to get it to stay up. There we go. Make sure the maneuver's up and um, just applying some mouse wheel clicks to adjust how high this is going to be. I'm scrolling down one click at a time here. 
And for a typical moon encounter, between 10 and 20 kilometers is good. We'll aim for 15. 15 kilometers. So you can see that's actually fairly precise. Now, what we have here is an estimated burn of 17 seconds. I know for a fact that that is going to be a 17 second burn for this big engine. Not necessarily 17 seconds for this little engine here, which is in, in the next stage. So, now that we have our maneuver set, we're going to go ahead and face our maneuver node, just like we usually do. I want my craft to stop rotating. Go ahead and click on that maneuver. Now this particular autopilot might not be available to you if you're playing career mode and your pilot hasn't advanced uh, in skill enough. That's just fine. You can get yourself manually pointed towards your maneuver and then leave it on stability insist so your rocket continues to pay face directly forward. Now that we're here, more or less, we are going to fast forward our clock to this maneuver. We can fast forward manually or we can use a feature in Kerbal Space Program click on the maneuver, the, the line, and say warp to next maneuver. And it'll automatically fast forward us to about a minute away from this maneuver. Since we're a minute away from the maneuver, that's why I made sure I was pointing the right direction first before getting to the maneuver. I didn't want to be fidgeting with this when I got there. So, now we're just going to get ourselves down to uh, 30 seconds, I think, and we'll... We can see our rocket okay in this light. Now, I, like I said, I know for a fact that our burn time is going to change when we get rid of the stage. So, in that case, I start my burn at 50% throttle when the estimated burn time and the node time are the same. And I'll do an advanced tutorial on why that's the case later on. But we know that this thing's going to run out of juice any second. There it goes. We still have some burn time left. So... Separate our stages, activate our engine, full throttle, and we still have 22 seconds to go. This engine's twitching around an awful lot, and that's a little bit inefficient. And the reason it's, uh, it's doing that is because the pilot's trying to adjust the gimbal. So, just lock that gimbal, that will make your life a little bit easier, and you can rely on the torque wheels. Two, one, zero. And using shift, and control instead of Z and X, I'll just make sure and fine-tune this a little bit more. About like that. Now I want to go ahead and delete the maneuver and take a look at my axle orbit. So my axle orbit says my periapsis is, uh, come on highlight, stay on there, there we go, 185 meters, it's still 185 kilometers. At this point we're no longer going to use our maneuver node. The maneuver node has gotten us close enough, but we need to do some fine tuning. So we're going to try applying a little bit of prograde thrust. Uh, yes, and we are seeing that this periapsis is dropping down if we continue to thrust forward a bit more. So we keep on doing that until we get this periapsis to where we want it. 10 kilometers is perfectly fine. Notice We've used a little bit of fuel from this uh, this particular rocket, but that's okay. That's the tutorial on how to basically reach the moon. We'll go ahead and fast forward to this moon encounter here and do our more uh, moon orbital insertion. So we're just fast forwarding time to this encounter. Basically you want to do the next maneuver at the earliest opportunity you can and just inside of the moon's sphere of influence is the best place to do that. So we're going to fast forward just to the moon's sphere of influence like that. And this is our opportunity to adjust this periapsis the way we want it to. Um, 
a lot of people would have you thrust prograde or retrograde um, to adjust the height of this periapsis. And that is actually not the most efficient way to do that. Uh, for instance, let's say, let's we're gonna do an experiment. We wanna get this periapsis to 15 kilometers. If we click on a maneuver and add some velocity, we see that it takes you know seven meters per second velocity to to do that to add that little bit of periapsis but since we're in a flyby situation we have these new we have these controlled uh, controls that we can use uh, which are radial and anti-radial we can do the same thing by pulling anti-radial And in so doing, we can see that anti-radial has much more authority on the height. See, I really got to zoom in here to separate these numbers out. There, it's at 17 kilometers, and I'm only using 1.7 meters per second of, of velocity. So in this situation, since we're so far away from the periapsis, we don't have an apoapsis defined. The most efficient place to control our periapsis or the most efficient nodes to control our periapsis is radial and anti-radial. I'm going to face anti-radial which is um, uh, along the orbit line it's outward so it's this way we can take a, we can see that if we take a look at the moon itself there it is. We can see that we're you know I'm pointing the same direction it looks like on the screen I, I don't know what it looks like on camera but we're pointing this direction, which is the same as this direction, and that will raise our periapsis. So once again, we just need a very little bit. I'm going to click on the periapsis so it stays there. Be ready with the shift key and the Z key. A little bit of shift, very little thrust, 13, 14, 15. And that brings us to our 15 kilometer periapsis. Now, the next thing we're going to do is plan orbital insertion at the periapsis always the most efficient spot to do this add a maneuver and pull the retrograde marker what we're trying to do is get our orbit as circular as possible fifteen by nearly fifteen that's really good so that's fifteen by twelve and yeah, just kind of you know making sure these are good 15 by 16, a little bit more, using the mouse wheel for some fine adjustments and quick pulses. There we go. A little bit more prograde. And that's reasonably good. Once again, face the maneuver node. And um, instead of warping to my maneuver, I'm going to warp to about about here. There's an issue in Kerbal Space Program right now where if around the moon, if you try to warp to the maneuver, sometimes you'll just fast forward right past it. So we fast forward to there. Now we can warp to the maneuver. And we see now that this maneuver is a 15 second burn. Um, we can see our ship okay, I guess, especially against the backdrop of space, like this. Not a bad little view. And we'll fast forward time to get down to 15 seconds or so. As is the case with any maneuver, we take the estimated burn time, divide it by two, and we come up with seven. That's where we're going to start our engines. Just like that. That camera flip means we've established an orbit of some kind. If we pop out to the map, we can see our orbit is, this apoapsis is quickly falling down, which is exactly what we want. Now we'll click on the apoapsis. Uh, this maneuver is outlived its usefulness. And we can just apply a little bit of thrust until the apoapsis and periapsis sort of 
flip around and equalize. So we have a 14.4 by 15.5 um, orbit around the moon. And there you have it. There's a solid step-by-step -step tutorial on reaching orbit around the moon. You can now get out and do a whole bunch of science experiments. If this was your ship in career mode, um, you'd be doing EVA reports and things like that. Um, like I do in my, um, my career mode. So anyway, the stock Kerbal X available in Sandbox is capable of reaching the moon and certainly reaching an orbit. It's also capable of landing, but that's going to be another tutorial. Until then, thanks for watching. And remember, while it is rocket science, it's not that hard. Goodbye.